Welcome back to the Student Hub Live. Well, we've given you a little bit of an introduction to the Open University, and I hope that you're still equally as excited as you were when you joined today's session. We're now going to focus on what it means to be an OU student. And so this session is from the Open University Students Association, and I'm joined by Stephanie Stubbins and Anka Seaton, who are going to tell us all about what the OU Students Association does. Now, Stephanie is the Vice President Community for the Association. Um, and Stephanie, you say that you found your studying a life-changing experience, and indeed you have. Tell us briefly what it's meant for you. Um, it's, it's stretched my life basically. I've got a different network of friends. Um, I've learned so much about myself and what I'm capable of doing. Um, and I've learned how to um, talk to people that I might not have met um, face to face. Uh, and also how to help other people through volunteering and through the Students' Association. And we're going to talk about the Students' Association and the benefits and things, but Anka, I wonder, Peter was just saying, you know, to students, volunteer, give up a bit of time. Mm -hmm. What has being involved with the Students' Association meant for you? Well, for me personally, since I started being part of the Students' Association and um, do things, um, I'm more confident. Well, I'm here. <laughs> um, I have picked up quite a lot of life skills like um, talking to people, um, selling things, critical thinking, quite a lot of um, things that are going to help me in my everyday life, in my working life. Uh, now my group of friends is mainly made up of OU students, which is uh, really good. Yeah. So it's, it's been a life-changing thing for me as well. Excellent. Now, do ask questions because we will try and put those to um, our guests. So if there's anything you want to know, in particular, um, I was looking at the Y032 forum yesterday and everyone was talking about the NUS card, which I really feel is mm -hmm. one of the most best benefits of being a new student myself, apart from the hoodies, which we've been talking about in other contexts as well. Um, what is the Students Association then and who is in, who is out? So every OU student is automatically a member of the Students' Association and we're basically there as a support network for community. We get the student voice heard through the Open University um, in meetings that we attend. Um, there's a leadership team um, that are students that actually uh, lead the Students' Association with a dec decision-making body. And then we've got the Board of Trustees that looks after the financial um, side of the association. And basically the point of the association, aside from facilitating things and being involved with governance, is representing the voice Definite, of students. Definitely. So we've got certain volunteers that um, appear in uh, committee meetings, especially high governance ones. Um, there's central committee representatives and they are students that have just come in to volunteer for those specific things to do with their faculties or to do with some part of the university. And they're in there taking the student um, voice in and, f and feeding back to the association. So, you've mentioned some of the things that you do. Now, I wanted to talk about the sort of nitty gritty about what the Students' Association do, because there's lots and lots of support, and you've touched on some of them. But tell us then about some of the things that students can get involved with. What, what support is that there out there? I mean, you're a listening ear um, for students, and you've got various things. You've got the Disabled Students Group, which we're going to focus on tomorrow. Um, you've also got the Educational Trust, Peter mentioned mentoring and op opportunities yep. and things like that. Mm -hmm. Tell us what students can do if they want to connect with each other and how the association can help with that. You can go onto the association's website and you can find a, a, a network of things that you can get involved with through Student Voice, volunteering through the community. Um, but there's also a nightline that you get directed to. There's um, certain officers and CC members that will represent you that you can contact and talk to about any of your needs. Can we talk about Nightline? Because I think this is really interesting. Mm -hmm. And one of the things I notice often about OU students is that they're very active at night, often because they've been working or doing something else in the day. But, you know, around midnight, you can often feel really alone, especially if you've got a TMA deadline, tutor mark assignment coming up. And, uh, you know, Nightline is a really great support, um, obviously available at night. Yes. <laughs> Um, they're open from 8pm until 6am and they are uh, uh, they're on the phone or on Skype or by email. So they're just a listening ear, they're a shoulder to cry on, they just listen to you and they do not judge. They're here just to be your friend. 
So if you are feeling panicked or overwhelmed, sometimes, you know, that can happen, if you, especially if you've got a lot going on. Yes. You could phone them and basically have an anonymous conversation with somebody yes. and say, I'm feeling really overwhelmed. Again, they might not say, well, the answer to your TMA is this, this or this, but it might help put things in perspective. Um, they, they're not... They're not answering your questions, really. They're there just to listen. And I find that when I talk to a friend or a person, I just feel better just by telling them what I'm going yeah. through. Yeah. And maybe while I'm talking to them, I come up with um, solutions to my problems. Yeah. So that is a great thing. So it's almost that, that idea that we were talking about earlier about articulating your study things helps you understand them. Mm -hmm. Sometimes articulating your feelings helps you make sense of them. Yes, that is for definite. Mm. OK, so we've got the Nightline, which is really important. There's other sorts of um, help and support. There's peer support and through the gate. Yes. Well, uh, peer support has been... Um, it's on hold at the moment because they're going through certain checks to do with the up updating policies and that, but yeah. that will be um, released again later in the year. And through the gate is something that's been worked on through our Vice President Equal Opportunities. So, And USET is really important because that is the... Uh, the charity that we raise funds for and they help support students that have got financial difficulties with their studies and they That's can apply. That's the Educational Trust, yeah, isn't so it? Yes, yeah. Uh, yeah. Brilliant, okay, lovely. Mm -hmm. um, you've also uh, got your shop. Yes. Oh, yes. The we, OU shop. <laughs> we love our well, shop. Well, OU student shop is, if you would like to buy a hoodie or some pencils or anything else in in between, our our shop offers a quite a wide range of things, and also more importantly, I think we have free past exam papers. Brilliant! Now you used to charge for these exam papers, and I think yes. it's fabulous you give free exam papers. I think everyone should be like downloading these because they. When I was studying, I used to pay for them in the olden days, mm -hmm. and they were so helpful for, for, yes. for things that had exams because it really helped you sort of understand the format. Now, there are less exams now with some of the new curriculum that's been introduced, mm -hmm. but for students who have exams, they're a great resource, aren't they? Yes, and um, I'm, I'm starting a, a course just now, and I already got my past exam papers um, saved so I can work through them um, during the course and at the end. Lovely. So um, we've talked about um, stationery. I mean, we talk a lot about stationery at the Student Hub Line. It gets <laughs> people very excited, in particular when we talk about highlighters and post-it notes. Um, but the hoodie is interesting because last week we were talking about sort of, um, you know, how we get into the mood to study. And I've heard a lot of mm -hmm. people say, actually, a hoodie is not just a hoodie. It's not just a label. It's about creating my physical space. You know, we're sort of saying, I can study anywhere. Mm -hmm. But when I do study, I need this. So for some people, it's a pen. Some people, it's a book. Some people, it's a hoodie. Some, something physical can really help mm -hmm. to sort of personalise your study place and put you in that sort of mindset, almost like you've got a different hat. In fact, we were talking about hats last week, weren't we, HJ? And <laughs> dressing up to feel like students. And you had all sorts of things on, didn't you? Yes. Well, we tried going with gowns and hats. Apparently that worked. I did feel more empowered, you know, while I was typing and more confident. So uh, maybe I'll try a different costume every week until I get, like, the <laughs> right one for me while I'm studying. <laughs> but uh, we'll see what other people think. Maybe they've got an idea about uh, my next costume. I'm not too sure. But, uh... Well, the only downside was you got very hot. But we do one of our. <laughs> we're having a debate actually tomorrow evening, and uh, we've got lots of hats in that particular debate. Um, so find out about that. Uh, that's from the open program, and uh, we're going to be debating whether or not having a named qualification is better than an open qualification. So that'll be very exciting, uh, in particular if you like hats. Okay. Now we were talking to you about where we study, etc. And we asked our students at home where they study, and let's see what they had to say. So we've got a uh, car, cafe, library, Germany. Oh, great. We've got some international <laughs> views. Out thing. and about. Bedroom. On the toilet. <laughs> a tree <laughs> house. A tree house. That has got to be the oh, best wow. study space. Um, desk and bedroom. Anywhere quiet. Wales. Um, train, trains coming up very... Um, uh, prominently actually there, bed, park, etc. Very versatile places that people are studying and the university library, perhaps the most conventional there. So people are studying in very, very different places. What's your advice um, in terms of where you study and how that might um, either 
be supported by that medium or not? I, th I think having your own uh, study space, whether it is in the living room and it's on your on your lap, but you've got your study study essentials near you and ready, or whether it's a desk or the coffee table or, or wherever, wherever is um, available, making sure that you've got that time and that space is important to help you to get into the zone of studying. Of course, some people study on the way to work and they yeah. study um, in the cafe. So uh, whatever works with you. Yeah. So commandeering some space if you can. Probably not the toilet, not if it's a, a one that other well, people need to likes. use. <laughs> but a small room nonetheless. Um, how do, how's it found in your experience? I mean, you've both become very involved with OU students. You're saying a lot of my friends are OU students now. Mm -hmm. One of the things we were talking about earlier was the difficulties that people can have being an OU student with a family who may not understand the need to have my pals in that particular order and my assignment deadlines there, if you're somebody like me who likes having things <laughs> in a certain order. How do you recommend, apart from getting people to start studying with the Open University, how do you recommend students tell their friends and family? How do they get support from that community network? I think letting them know straight away why you're doing um, the OU, why you're studying, and um, making it clear when you've got certain times when you need that study time. Yeah. And so they will already understand that if they try to disturb you during that time, they know that you let them know well yeah. ahead of the time. Um, if you've got family that don't quite understand, then you, I suppose you rely on other students. You can meet, as Peter said earlier, that you can meet students online through social media or in the forums. Yeah. Um, the association have got some set groups. I've got an OU Students Association community group on Facebook where you can meet other volunteers and other students. And there's also association um, groups for different regions and the mm -hmm. nations as well. But Often you can share those experiences where, where your family don't quite understand or you've got no one to speak to. You, there's other students feeling the same, going through the same, and just finding your way to those spaces will help you um, relate and help you balance out your study time and, and your life. OK. We've got questions mm -hmm. on the hot desk. Yes, uh, there is uh, one specific one that I like to pick up on. I know uh, we have another one as well. Uh, can USA advocate for individual students if they're having any issues? Is that something that USA can deal with? So, uh, on an individual basis, we don't. It is something that we're looking into, maybe in the future, but um, we, t we tend to do uh, any investigations or uh, looking into things. We do it on a more um, level basis. So, we're, we're speaking for students generally because we can't take on individual cases. Um, at the moment anyway, but it's something that's been raised before and we're looking into. Where might students go then if they need some form of advocation? It's through the Open University, through the, the, the Help Centre, find your student support contacts. Um, and and you, you can always talk to association yeah. volunteers. We might be able to signpost to the right person. We might be able to give some um, friendly advice about how the best way is to go go into a situation and, and find the help you need, but taking it on personally, one-to-one, -one, we can't do at the moment. And Maria, you work at the um, student support team, and welcome to the hot Thank desk. You. Do you get students asking to advocate? Is that something you've come across? Um, not, not necessarily, no. Um, you do get students who want to know how to engage with other students. Mm -hmm. um, most of the times you advise them to you know, engage on the forum. Sometimes you find students who have set up WhatsApp groups um, outside of the OU structure, and then students can meet within their, you know, the areas in which they're, they're at. But in terms of advocating for students, um, we, the student support team, we try to do as much as we can. Um, so our, I think our role sometimes comes into there in terms of liaising between um, students and tutors and things such as that, but not necessarily advocating as such. Um, but yeah. Lovely. Well, I hope we've addressed that. If we haven't for any reason, send us an email, studenthub at open.ac.uk, and we can always try and answer your question more specifically for you. OK, now, Freshers is a big uh, two-week event that you've got on uh, at the moment. So tell us about some of the activities that you've got lined up for new students. So we had an activity last night, which was a student support um, activity, where we talked to students about um, some of the issues that they might come across or answered their questions and did, did some signposting. We've had activities all last week. What we've got tonight is the faculty area representative chat. There's one STEM. in STEM with STEM. Kath Brown. Um, tomorrow is our drop-in session. Uh, it's a freshers special. So every two weeks we host a drop-in session on Adobe Connect where students can come in and talk about their studies, talk about how they're feeling, or talk general chat about Anything, you know, what they're really. having for dinner. It's, it's an open <laughs> area and it's got quite popular. So they're normally every Thursday um, between six and eight. The 
next one is tomorrow night, which is the Freshest Special, but they'll be every two weeks after that. And if you look on the association page or on the website, you can find out um, when we're doing those events or anything else. Uh, we've also got studio this week on Friday, yes. uh, which is our radio show. Um, so please tune in for that as well on, on Friday. Mm -hmm. All the Freshers events are on our website. Brilliant. And for those of you who are brand new to the Open University, Adobe Connect is our OU tutorial platform. And tomorrow um, we're going to be showing you how that works and inviting you to join a session. To be completely honest, it's very intuitive. So you can just log on and join Steph's session. But we will be running through some of the basics with that um, tomorrow around lunchtime with Rob Moore. And then after that, he's going to allow you to go into a room and talk to him in person. So that'll be fun as well. Right. Now, you've mentioned some of the volunteering as well. Can you tell mm -hmm. us more? about how people can get involved. Is it something that you need to have been a student for quite a while to do? Um, you've said how meaningful it is to you, but what would you say to students out there who may think, well, I'm not sure what I could offer? Well, there's all different types of volunteering opportunities, whether you've got just a small amount of time, whether you want to do it through through um, online or whether you want a face-to-face -face event. There's, there's always something there um, open to um, apply for. So we've got community champions, that's a new role in the community. So they're amongst students, letting them know what the association is doing and, and helping to bring that sense of um, community together. We've got LERs that um, look out for any issues in at the grassroots level and they feed back to the, our faculty area representatives. We've got the CCRs, which I mentioned earlier, which um, they go into... Central Committee ranks. Yeah, yeah sorry, acronyms. <laughs> uh, so they go into some of the governance committees of the faculties and in the uh, university generally. And then we've got meetup hosts. Do you want to say a bit about yes, that? Yes, we we have a wide range of meetup hosts. They are students just like you and me who would like to set up a meetup in their area. So if they let us know, we can help them by sending a um, goodie bag with freebies and. Um, a sign for their table and also um, post their event on our website and on Twitter and Facebook so other other students could find out where the closest meetup is and when it is and they can join and they can bring their friends and family if they want to. Yeah, on, on, the, on the 24th of February we've got our big meetup we hold them about three or four times a year mm -hmm. so this will be a time when we're trying to get all our meetup hosts to um, set up their meetups at the same same time on the same day we run competitions and we share photographs and it's just it's just a great event to get um, yes. to, to join in with and participate in and this is around the UK and beyond so we've got online sessions as well including with continental Europe Brilliant. Now, the final thing I just must mention very briefly, even bigger than a meetup, is your conference. Oh, yes. So briefly tell people about how they can find out about that. And that's an opportunity to come to Milton Keynes. So we're both on the conference steering committee, so we're actually in the planning part <laughs> of the conference. But it will be advertised through the association. Um, you might get an opportunity to register your interest. Uh, it's on the 22nd to the 24th of June, and it's a chance for 400 OU students to come to campus and another 400 to join online. There's all different activities. Yes, there are all, all sorts of things from the serious business through to workshops and stands from societies, groups and um, the OU. Brilliant. Stephanie and Anka, thank you so much for filling us in on the Students Association. It really is an important thing to hear the student voice. I mean, Stephanie and Anka have been telling you about the things that you can do, but honestly, coming to Milton Keynes and being involved in some of these committees, hearing what's happening, meeting some of the academic team, the support team, etc., gives just such a different experience to your OU study. Um, so do find out about it. You don't need any qualifications. It's really about your experience and what you bring to this from a student perspective that we're particularly interested in hearing. So I really would encourage you at home to find out, look at the website, see what you can get involved with. Um, but do step forward because the Open University really do want to hear from students. That student voice is so important to us. There's also a student voice website as well, which I should briefly mention. HJ, did you have any final questions before we go to our break? I think uh, we did, didn't yeah. we, from Victoria? Um, so Victoria is asking, when do peer support, when did this peer support team begin? Oh, now you mentioned this was on hold. Did yeah, you? it's on hold at the moment. If you look on the website, it explains that it will be hopefully later in the year, around about June or July time, mm -hmm. yeah. they're aiming for. It's mainly because all the, all the um, 
the governmental policies have changed they and we have to come yeah we have yes. to come into line with them so it's just a, a case of waiting till that's in place yeah. Yeah. But, but the soon. forums are brilliant aren't they For at the moment so module yeah. forums cafes etc that's a great place to see if anyone Definitely. wants to study together and um, you can study just on the phone can't you you don't have to right. meet up even yeah. though meeting up is nice yes, yes. There's, yes. A, there's always something going on in the association so looking for the website I think you've got all the links at the end do, anyway yeah. Yeah. but if you've got health issues that affect your studies it's really really good um, opportunity to join in tomorrow at one o'clock I think the session is and also Plexus the LGBT plus community um, is got representative from them that's going to be on tomorrow so again that's that's other different types of support that the association offers lovely well thank you both for filling us in on all of that we have got a link of resources that accompany this session and a lot of other sessions so if you go to the studenthublive.open.ac.uk website again um, you will find all of the links to those resources including the students association you'll also see there their twitter accounts which you can follow um, the facebook page etc so there's an awful lot going on there that you can get involved with as well okay what we're going to do now is show you inside the library because our next session is going to be a Q&A with the library. So this is your chance to put questions to our two fabulous librarians who will be joining me next. But first, let's show you what goes on in the Open University Library. <laughs> 